to this week's episode of Blog Talk TV, the social media inspired talk show that features some of the biggest names in blogging. That's right. We focus on the impact those people have made uh, on their community and offer you some how-to tips to jumpstart your own blogging career. So I'm your host, Bess Hour, and we are sitting in my kitchen. I'm here with Ben Reed. From OrlandoWaterhole.com, and who you don't see is an incredible crew <laughs> working behind the scenes to make us look so great. As well as a few dogs and cats, and dogs so if and one goes, you know, you see a great day and go walking by, just just roll just with ignore, it. Just ignore, ignore. Just roll with uh, it. On today's show, we've got Justice Mitchell, uh, who's got some fantastic tips about content and how to really create some unique content that makes you stand out on your blog. Yeah, so I've had the privilege of working with Justice on a few social media campaigns and uh, just one of the most creative people I know. He's one of those artsy, right-brained people and so uh, just some great ideas on how to create some unique content. And if you're just tuning in and you're not familiar with Blog Talk TV, we are uh, part of gottagetblogging.com, which is an online membership community, it features how to videos, uh, uh, networking opportunities, uh, and some ebooks to help you better your blogging. So be sure to check that out. Yeah, so the ebooks are actually kind of new for us. So we've started an ebook series. Uh, we're trying to give people a variety of content so they can learn how their style is. And so the ebook series is actually, the first one we've started is about monetizing your blog. That seems to be what most of mm -hmm. our community members want to know how to do. So our first ebook focuses on what sponsors are looking for when they approach a blog to consider working with them. So we canvassed a whole bunch of brand reps and sponsors, um, ranging from global brands to uh, small local boutiques. And we asked them, what do you look for when considering working with a blogger. What do you want to see on their website? What types of things? And I was amazed. So we asked him, how long do you spend evaluating a blogger? And you know what they said? A, a couple of minutes. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought was going to be. It was actually 15 to 20 minutes they spend on that your long. website looking for certain things. And so we went through and listed those things they're looking for. That makes for. me nervous. I know. Because well, it's, you it's, can find a lot in 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, so definitely check out the ebook. I, I was amazed. So a lot of good information in there. So, uh, But before we get started, we've got a quick blogging tip. So uh, take a look. I'm going to follow the 10 to 1 rule. That means you're going to tweet or retweet other people's things before you tweet one time for yourself. So you are going to reply to somebody, you're going to retweet their information, you're going to tweet somebody else's blog post that's useful information. You're going to do 10 of those before you finally say, hey guys, check out this great blog post I wrote. So the 10 to 1 rule will really help you attract new followers because they're going to see that you're interested in engaging in conversation and, hey, you might retweet me, so I'm going to follow you. So 30 times a day of useful information, the 10 to 1 rule, and then if you follow your PFP, that personal follow policy that we talked about in a previous video, then I guarantee your following will grow with real, authentic, useful people that like your information and want to share it further. So Twitter just may become your new favorite tool because it's going to work for you, it's going to grow your following, it's going to be relevant for you, and it's going to rock your social media world. I'm sorry, I have the giggles from first the Yorkie, then the Great Dane. Anyway, if you like that tip, be sure to check out gottagetblogging.com. Not only do we have how-to tutorials, but we also got podcasts and eBooks, and I think they should check it out. A whole lot more. That's right. Yeah. So with us now is Justice Mitchell from justicemitchell.com, and you are an integrated marketing expert, which sounds very fancy, and a social media and content marketing consultant. Because we talked about that earlier, and we didn't really know what to put down. So yeah, that <laughs> kind of like puts it all together. A Swiss army knife of services, if you will. Thank you very much. Oh, good analogy. Well, that's actually the icon on my website is sort of that kind of the idea that my self-brand sort of started early on is, yeah, I can, I can do that and, and it ended up being sort of a metaphor for me in that I design, I'm a creative director, I do advertising, marketing, and then social sort of kind of came into that right. fold. And so, so yeah. what is your background and how did you get involved in social media marketing? 
I, like so many uh, people early on uh, that had been in advertising from a traditional sense, uh, kind of rolled into interactive advertising just in the kicking of the tires, say 1994 and early on, uh, and, and, and building websites and so forth. And much like that, it's the same thing. We just sort of picked up pieces as social media came on board with LinkedIn in the early 2000s. And then as we started getting into uh, the past decade, if you will, uh, that's when we started, all of us old dogs kind of picked up these new tools and said, how can I make this effective for my clients? Or, uh, you know, is this something that I can sort of parlay into my business or make services out of? And uh, there wasn't any formal training. There wasn't any classes. So it's a lot of kicking the tires and always being uh, a little, there's a sense of uh, what we refer to as FOMO, the fear of missing out. Mm -hmm. So we're constantly afraid that we're uh, not going to know the latest and the greatest and that kind of keeps the early adopter motor running. There we go. So you talked about content marketing and, and I've seen that word all over the place. So can you explain, you know, what is it and how can, and how can bloggers really think about content marketing? Sure. Um, one of the things that uh, I always talk about when I talk about content marketing is people get very excited about social media as a buzz term. And then they start talking about content, me uh, content marketing, and, but they sort of see them separately. Think, if you will, as social media being trains going to different locations but they're empty buckets and content is ultimately what you put on the train or into those buckets. So those are photos, those are videos, those are um, white papers, those are presentations uh, and, and things like this, podcasts. It's just great, amazing content. You've got a lot of great people that come on here, give a lot of great advice. And it's advice like this that is also what we used to refer to a long time ago as the stickiness factor or a reason to return and come back and find out more. Um, is, is the actual like that is the stickiness st and that's factor. an old that, that's that's an old term like only that's like a decade ago only you uh, old like, guys know like, yeah, that the old old guys so the stickiness factor yes yeah, so the reason to return is because you have great content um so you 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 uh, position yourselves around great people and and i will come back and and see the next episode and the next episode and so forth that we're looking structure retention we're looking for the stickiness factor here aren't we guys that's right yeah or 3M wait, as, wait, a, wait. as a sponsor. I did not get the response I just wanted, aren't we guys? Yeah. <laughs> okay, just making sure. So there's two just conversations waking up going, the crew. Oh, yes. I, I'm trying to sell, I'm, I'm a, the advertiser jumped in. I'm like, let's look for more money. So <laughs> with these buckets, one of the things you do really well is incorporate photography and you mm. do a little bit of video. So can you talk a, a little bit about how do you tell a story through photos and videos, and and what how do blog how can bloggers think about using that that medium? Okay, uh, actually, way back when when I went to art school, I was an illustration major, and illustration majors sort of look at things like they read the article, and then they basically try to summarize that into a visual that sort of encapsulates what you've read, um, whether that's done with graphic design or a hand done illustration or with a photo or with mm -hmm. a video. So one of the things that I invite bloggers to do is when they write their content is basically what is the summation or the totality of that blog post? Uh, what kind of visual comes out of that or what kind of visuals? Maybe they're multiple. Uh, and then try to develop a, uh, a, a, an image that sort of summarizes that mm -hmm. uh, quality or maybe a couple. Um, and in some cases, if it's a technical, you might, from, you might want to develop and put in a slide share presentation or a, or a graph or an infographic to support that uh, information. But that's really how those two hold hand in hand, uh, is, is the story that your content tells or the message that it does and then try to support that with something. So you are amazing to follow on Instagram. And you use that quite a lot. How can bloggers really use Instagram and some of those visual apps out there to really help tell that story? Okay, Instagram's that train, right? Well, the, nobody's gonna be interested in your train unless it has a lot of content in it, so go out and take your photos. Uh, my tips for Instagram, just go and take your phone and shoot all the time and anything, randomly in the mall, have fun, do textures, this, that, the other thing and then retroactively go back and see if there is something that is there. A lot of people seem to get caught up in the moment of like, I should shoot right now and then I should crop and do this and that and put my textures and all of this on right now and post. You, hmm. you, you, you needlessly complicate everything and you lose sort of um, maybe a, 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 even a, a storyline 
that might be occurring at that time. Say, for instance, if you're with your family or with your friends and you're like running around um, at, a, at an event. Uh, and then so doing, if you were to sit there, you're kind of compartmentalizing it too mm -hmm. much as opposed to just shooting throughout the day. That's a great tip. So go back later, edit those videos and upload Absolutely. Them. And then you can take time with the filters and the apps and all the other yeah. great things that are happening. Um, so, so there's a lot so of So what would be the rule on t hashtagging it later, Graham? Is it a later, Graham, if it's not in the moment? I, I, this is a deep philosophical <laughs> question right here, Justin. Okay, okay. If, 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 um, and, it's, and it's funny that, that I can actually parlay this into something that you and I have done. Okay. We have worked on street teams and yep. developed uh, on, in the moment content for live events. And uh, when we have, we do uh, try to make our street team sort of publish in, the, in that moment, especially if it has something to do with an upcoming, say somebody's going to be on stage or a guest speaker is coming or something like that. If it's time sensitive, mm -hmm. I think that, yeah, maybe you should treat it that way. But otherwise, I think that you can probably go back and do it retroactively. Without it being a throwback Thursday. Without it being a... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Brand. Absolutely. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, I, I would do it at the end of the day, uh, but, but, for a, but, but for a business in the moment, right. absolutely try to, you know, make that happen. So aside from photos and videos, are there other ways that bloggers can use graphic design to tell a story? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, in, in any, any way, pieces of iconography, um, little, uh, you know, things that might mean something like the, the Swiss Army knife for me. You know, that's something that I run on my PowerPoints. Um, so in a live event, when I'm doing my speaking engagements, that that little bug is there. It's on my website. It's uh, it, you know, so it's on my marketing materials. So it, it carries over. It it ca casts that um, all the way across my personal brand, making you think. You're thinking. Do you, do you have something like that? No, and that's and a, you that, should. that's what I'm thinking of. You've got the whole Swiss Army. What would be your image or symbol? On my travel site, it was my face. And it, yeah, <laughs> and that was that was the icon that I have. Is a I do not of have one. I'm going to have to come up with one. See, for the for a while, mm -hmm. I thought the picture of you, Central Florida top five, that was your right. That was your, yeah, was yeah, but that's photo. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like that idea. All right, so tell us about Maximize Social Business. .com. Maximize Social Business is a great uh, website that I'm involved in, developing uh, content for marketers of all different levels, both B2C and B2B, and I write specifically for the content marketing sort of uh, vertical, and we just give tips on, on ways to make great content, but the site in its totality gives all kinds of amazing tips for all different levels, so I, I recommend everybody just give it a look and see if it's sticky enough for you to return. Okay. What's the coolest thing you've ever experienced because of your work in social media marketing? I don't, there's so many. Um, I've launched a lot of amazing products, uh, some for Audi, some for, uh, we talked about uh, Las Vegas earlier. You just did a trip. Yep. And uh, I, I launched uh, Wynn Resorts and um, uh, Hard Rock Studios hotels here in Florida. Um, I, I just have fun. I mean, I just have fun. I, I, I think that that's what's kept me doing this for one I know that I years. thought was cool. So at, uh, I was at a conference where you were in charge of the vending machines kind of, mm -hmm. where you, you didn't put in money, you tweeted for the brand. FanWise, uh, look at that, yeah, FanWise is a, is a, is a piece of technology yeah, that's, that's cool. developed by a previous agency that I was at called Starmark, they're out of Fort Lauderdale, great agency and they have a great concept and basically you're paying with tweets it was um, for very fan cool influence. Yeah. idea, very hmm. cool idea. Well Justice, we gotta take a break, uh, okay. we're actually gonna go visit Professor Josh, we're going deep into the bloggers lab. So we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Professor Josh, and today I want to talk to you about one of the great apps that you can get for your computer. So whether you have a PC or Mac, you can get something to broadcast your iPhone directly onto the screen. So Reflector is something you can install on both your PC and Mac and easily showcase what's on your screen on your iPhone. So right over your Wi-Fi, you're connected. You have the app installed, actually, the software right on your computer. You're able to purchase this for under $13, so you can't beat that. It's a lot cheaper than getting an Apple TV. Um, and you're able to display what's going on in your screen. So if I wanted to showcase something and click on it and go through it and maybe showcase Twitter, I could easily walk through that and show someone how to do that right on the app. So this is great for your blog if you want to showcase an app, 
talk about it, um, go into a tutorial. Also, it's great for YouTube. So you're able to record these videos. You can add them over other videos. So if you want to splice them together and edit them, it's really easy and simple. And like I said, all you have to do is turn on your AirPlay right on your phone and have it accessible to this device and have it right up there. So it's a great way to kind of walk through and get through different things. So I definitely recommend this for anyone out there that has an iOS device that wants to showcase apps and, and showcase what's going on. So it's even great at your house. So if you wanna bring something up on the screen to showcase to people, this is a great device to have. Um, definitely check them out online. So reflectorapp.com and go ahead and get a purchase of this and download it today. Thanks again and it's Professor Josh. And we're back, good stuff. Yeah. So Justice, we uh, always include uh, the question of the show uh, okay. well, after oh. we come back. And uh, today's, oh, that's right, we forgot, we forgot our jazz, jazz hands. hands last oh. time. Okay. Whoops, all right, that makes it even more special. <laughs> oh, okay, that's right. So today's question comes Hashtag to us. Hashtag hands. Hashtag hands. That's gang oh. sign, geek gang, <laughs> geek gang sign. Oh, I like that. Sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> Christina. <laughs> <laughs> Christina. Bang, that just happened. <laughs> then that's a, uh, never mind. Uh, Christina Thomas of Go Epicurista. Oh, I love her blog. Uh, dot com asks uh, our question today. How do I best promote my blog to get more followers? How do you do it, Bess? What's one of your best practices? Oh, my best practice that I tell everybody is to promote everybody else's blogs. Yeah? Any particular way? Just on Twitter or? Um, well, I always find it's reciprocal. If you are putting out other people's stuff that's great stuff, uh, it's inevitable that they'll eventually return the favor to you. And so I actually follow the 10 to 1 rule on Twitter. So you're going to tweet or retweet other people's stuff 10 times before you tweet one time for your own blog. And you'd be amazed by putting that niceness and that good karma out there, it definitely comes back to you. So that's my best tip for getting new followers to your blog. All right. Um, one of the things that I like to try and do, you know, we talk about guest posting, yep. right, to write on somebody else's blog, but I, I think sometimes we, sometimes we are very narrow focused. So if we have a fitness blog, we would only guest post on other fitness blogs. Right. And after a while, you've already guest posted on the, that community. So how else do you get more followers? So one strategy that I learned a while back that I've tried here and there is to find what can I write about in my expertise in different other niches? So for example, if you're a travel blogger, could you write on a mm -hmm. finance blog and talk about how to save money when you travel or those kinds of things? If you are a uh, couponing blogger, could you find a fashion blogger and write some deals along that side? So what are those other areas that you haven't tapped into that you can find some relevant content? And that, would, that just opens up a, a limitless market. I'm sorry, we had a camera difficulty on that side. <laughs> All good? Okay, keep going. We're good. Uh, and I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you got all that. <laughs> Justice, what about you? Uh, well, um, you're really great at stealing my thunder. We did, we did this presentation once many moons ago where I did 40 tactics in 20 minutes. So I did uh, two tactics <laughs> a minute. Right. And she gets up before me about an hour prior to. Without having seen your presentation. Without, we had not seen one another's presentation at all. And I'm literally going through, I'm like, yeah, that's slide seven, that's slide 12, <laughs> that's slide 17, that's like, and she's just destroying me. And literally by the time I got up there, she had covered half of my deck. So. I was like, this is just awesome. So, uh, no, but I think probably what you're saying is really, really intrinsically uh, 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 crucial. Is when you develop content, whether it's a great presentation or whether it's a great blog, simply say, and it's always the simple things that get you really just natural conversation and natural followers, is simply say at the end, hey, um, if, this, uh, if, if this is great for you, hey, can you share this? If not, maybe you know somebody in a business setting or in a, in a different business that, that might be applicable to, maybe you could just share it with them. Simply just do the ask. It's not pressing anybody and what it does is it just makes everybody for a moment go, you know, I do have a friend that this might actually uh, mm -hmm. carry over to. And that is just that one moment that they will probably uh, take and say, hey, check this article out. Very cool. So it's not for me, but it might be great for you. So let me ask both of you on the on the idea of sharing, because I read a lot of stuff in a feed reader, in feed mm -hmm. So do you then go to the blog to share things, or are you sharing only across Twitter, or do you share from within however you read blogs? Where do you 
How do you manage uh, all that? I don't use any type of reader or no. feed. Um, so mine's always going directly to the blog itself and looking there. And then usually, so bloggers, at the end of your post, if you don't have some type of social share button down there, um, I like Shareaholics. It gives you the different options to share. Make sure you add that because that's probably the most common way that I share. I'll tweet it out right then. Mm -hmm. I think for me, uh, it, it's it's when I have something that I'm ready to tee up, like a blog post or a video mm -hmm. or a presentation, I, de I definitely want to touch um, my primary uh, social media touch points, my Twitter, my Facebook, you know, uh, possibly um, making an Instagram out of it or constructing mm -hmm. a, you know, some other type of visual. Um, but most of the time I, I like to retweet and I just like to kind of make that natural. Uh, and and uh, other things too, I found great success utilizing tools like uh, RSS uh, readers that then, um, you know, if it's a blog that I follow such as yours, um, I'll push it right back out because I mean I think that it's important to me that I am associated so that, that that that's something that I like to do. Great. So we'd love to hear your thoughts on today's question. You can send them via Twitter to uh, at blog talk TV and if you'd like to submit a question to be featured on a future show uh, you can email us to uh, Bess at flblogcon.com and include your social media profiles and we'll give you a shout out on there as well. Yeah absolutely let us know we can always grill our guests whoever it is. So we're going to move on to my favorite part, show and tell, Yay. Uh, where we highlight some of our favorite tweets, blog posts, apps, tech gear, and more. So if there's something that you'd like us to see and check out, you can email us that too, Bess at flblogcon.com. But without further ado, Bess, what do you have for us? Oh, so mine is awesome. So I love taking selfies. I have a selfie stick. 19 bucks on Amazon, but that, the coolest thing about the it. the official name, selfie stick? No, I don't know what the official name is, but it's a selfie stick. So let me open up my phone. Open up the photo app. The thing I like about this, oops, wait, I gotta turn it around. Maybe. There we there go. There we go. Is watch this. So guys, get in. Camera crew, you guys in? And there we go. See, let me get you guys. Every time this is connected via Bluetooth to take the picture. So I don't have to be reaching out there to do it. And you don't have to waste time with the timer. And I'm more this way there. too. There Look we go. That. So my That's selfie fun. stick, 19 bucks, Amazon, Bluetooth. Get it. Done. How about you? Uh, I have this uh, little device it's, I don't know what the technical name for it is called, but it's a, a multiple USB drive. So I got it uh, at Amazon. And, uh, you know, your computer only has two USB drives. Yeah. So very quickly I found with it between a hard drive and oh, a microphone okay. and maybe a mouse and another hard drive or something, you don't have enough space here. Mm -hmm. um, so this has uh, three inputs on this side, another one on this side, so you can fit four of these inside there so you can charge your iPhone while you're doing work. And so it just... Uh, it's like 12 bucks and it just uh, has been a lifesaver so I you have can to see unplug and replug so right. um, I'll find out the technical term in a moment. External so USB. Know. External USB something. Device connected dongle. What about you Justice? What do you have for us? Um, I think for me is something that is uh, is something a lot of us are talking about uh, within the industry and that is uh, drone photography. <laughs> so uh, little remote control drones. Uh, there are literally hundreds of companies that are developing drones that are both easy to fly and easy to manage. You can be anywhere from a few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars depending upon the type of camera that you intend to lift, whether that's a full-size DSLR or whether that is something like a GoPro. So. Um, the photography is absolutely amazing. The technology in these things is getting really, really streamlined and you can just have some amazing, amazing shots. And we've uh, utilized uh, some of that photography yeah. for projects we've had in the past. Yeah, for yeah. events we've covered. That's right. uh, there's some skill though with, with there driving is, them there, there is. Right? And But the things that, that's happening now is that, that that is actually a new sales point uh, in drone photography in mm -hmm. that a lot of the newer drones that are coming out easy to fly or or right out of the box so everything is like right. really quick yeah program it like with a gps on yep. your iphone to different points or whatever device you may have set to sail and it's off it's on, awesome. on its way yeah so justice where can we find you online absolutely that's at justicemitchell.com and uh, you can pretty much find me at any one of those extensions at justice mitchell for twitter and uh at justice or justice mitchell at uh, instagram and all the other ones youtube you name it so 
And you can find me online at orlandowaterhole.com. Download on iTunes. And if you think it's interesting, share it with a friend. That's right. There was the ask. That's right. I he brought it back that. around. Yeah. Right. I Boom. like that. So you can find me, Bess Hour, at gottagetblogging.com or online at Twitter at Bess underscore hour and I think that's it for this week we're out of time so Justice thanks for being on thank you for having me I really appreciate it we'll see everybody it. next time take care thank you I like I need like papers I need